Right, I want to try and make a sort of a lighthouse scene with the streaming light effect on the light beam and I'm going to try and build it out of whatever I can find available. So in the create library here I noticed I've got uh, Bryce Premium and I thought this peer light might be a good starting point for my lighthouse it's already got some lights built into it and this um, might do for the top of the, the lighthouse. So you can see that it's uh, made in several components so I'm going to lose this bottom set of components and a few of the things here so we've just got this upper section there's a selection of spotlights just there and a light and there's um, some other things in here, there's these bits whatever they are some kind of uh, support, I don't think I need those and there's these two cylinders one of these cylinders that's got a bump channel on there what's the other one got on it, let's have a look at the material on that one that's got another pattern on there, so I'm, I'm just going to get rid of one of those so that it doesn't have quite such an extreme pattern on it, you can still see some pattern on there I just want some um, effect that there's some glass there but I don't want it to be I don't want it to be too strong so if I put the diffuse on there that'll make it really bright, I can cut the bump height down so just get rid of the stripiness it's a little bit of stripiness but, uh, I can live with that, I just wanted that central section to be quite bright that's all I'll s reset the diffusion for now so that's more or less as it was, so that's going to be the top of my lighthouse and also in here there's these additional primitives that uh, Rashad Carter made and if I can just get, find them, they're in here somewhere very handy let's see, there's got this uh, tapered cylinders that will do and I'm going to sort of enlarge that I don't need this plane really, it's irrelevant take this funnel shape and enlarge it, lengthen it. This is just going to make the another bit of the lighthouse, I suppose. So that's the building, and I'll maybe put material on that. But I don't imagine it's going to be a very bright scene, so needn't worry too much. Go to Bryce Pro Materials. Um, we've got useful and fast, subtle construction material. Again, I'll just cut the ambience. I don't think they'll be able to see very much. So, that, after a fashion, is from a distance going to be my lighthouse. Now, the important thing about this is it's already got some lights in here. If you can see, I'm zoom in on the wireframe, we've got a radial light there, and we've also got a, a selection of however I'm going to select them, spotlights obey, arranged in a circle around that shining outwards. So there's already quite a lot of lighting built into that that we'll be able to take advantage of. So I'll just group all that together and call it light house. So, and then I'll just add that to the library or whatever, I'll put it somewhere where I can find it. Artifacts I'll call it. Right, okay. So that's that. Now I'm going to use a couple of scenes of my own to provide me with uh, something to build on. So I'll go up to Bryce Downloads and I'm going to use cloud, Bryce Plow Cloudscapes, this scene with this little bit of a headland in, but I'm going to get rid of the cloud and I'm also going to use um, one of these night cloud scenes. So I'm going to graph that in instead of the cloud in the background and it's probably going to be uh, that one I think. So. I'll do is go back to my scene. I don't need this now because I've added that to the object library so I'll just go and find my scene with the head landing which looks like that and I'll just go into copy the terrains ignoring the volumetric cloud so that's just the terrains there the clouds not selected so I just go edit and copy and I go to the camera edit and copy matrix. Now I find my uh, other scene, the cloudscape, so I just drop that in, I don't save that one, and that's got the clouds in, and I go edit and paste, and that puts my terrain in, 
edit select camera camera selected and go edit and paste matrix and that'll move the camera to its original position compared with this headland now I see I've already got another light source in here that came in with the cloud scene I'm just going to get rid of that and then I'll go to my create menu get the lighthouse that I made and I'm going to lift that up and put it on the headland somewhere in an appropriate position if I can. I don't know how large to make it yet but give that a go and see how that looks. Right, the thing you'll immediately recognise is that the render speed's quite slow and the reason for that is that all these additional light sources that have been included are interacting with the volumetric cloud so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an effects plane in there, a bit like the shadow capture that's going to allow me to create the effect of the streaming light and I'm going to make sure that all the lights that are, that are creating that effect are linked to that plane so they're going to only include that surface so then they'll ignore the volumetric cloud so this is the, the rule. If I take this um, funnel here and I copy and paste it, that's Control C, Control V and I'm going to turn that into an infinite plane and I'll just reset it now and I'll, I'll, I'll lift it up vertically and then rotate it round 90 degrees so now if I look at it it's exactly bisecting that uh, lighthouse and the material on it if I make it diffuse grey and then make it fully transparent so now when the light l hits it, it'll light it up. That's all I need to do to it. It's not, no materials needed, just just if you're going fully transparent. And uh, now, if I take the spotlights that are in here, edit them all together, and include objects, and I only include the plane I've just created, which, uh, to be fair, I'm not really sure what it's called. So I'll have to select that plane to that. Or I'll change the attributes and uh, call that lighting effect plane and then I'll be able to find it when I go and look in the light lab again so select all the um, spotlights and then go include and then I include the lighting effects plane it, obviously there wasn't enough room to put all the word in so now and there's a, another light source in there I think inside the, the light out of lighthouse there that lighter green one that's just a point light source a radial light so if I get hold of that edit it, include and include just the lighting effect again that will mean it we should now render a lot faster because that light's only falling on the plane and it's ignoring the volumetric cloud at the moment though it's not doing very much it's a bit weak so what I'll do is I'll go to the spotlights again because they're going to have the greatest effect there, edit them and um, turn the fall off to, uh, we'll, we'll try none, that might be a bit extreme. Let's see what happens now. Oh yes, that is a bit extreme. But what I can do is I can squish them down to narrow the beam. So that, that'll bring the beam in a bit. Still quite a lot of light though, though the beam is still quite wide. So narrow it still further. And then it'll, it'll it's, a bit, it's a bit too intense that's alright, that can be corrected now so you could, we can edit that, we can reduce the intensity so I'll make the intensity 5 see how that looks so now a more reasonable level of intensity, perhaps with a bit of artistic license we can, uh, we can increase that so if I go edit and uh, put it at 10 now this other light here was lighting this glass, whatever this glass is called. I'll see if I can find it amidst these things, right. So that's cylinder 13. Now at the moment that's going to be part of this this group and you can't see the group so if I ungroup that, in fact I'll just take cylinder 13 and copy and paste it and then delete the original one then that cylinder 14 won't be part of the group and I can move it outside without it being part of the group which means which means when I go into the radio light and go into the light lab I can now see cylinder 14 because it doesn't see groups and include that 
in the in the things it lights up and then it'll light the the glass up in there and I can also increase the amount of light that's producing so if I make that none that might be a bit extreme so if I just increase that to say 50 double it it'll produce a bit more light it'll light the inside of that up so that's the to explain the light spilling out of there I think maybe more I could get away with let's make it to 110 see how that looks okay that's a bit brighter so now we've got that effect but all this is in shadow we want to include another light source mainly to demonstrate how you can do it and, and also not slow the render to down too much so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create another light source here and enlarge it so we can get a hold of it this is just going to be light the land gently so I'll edit that I'm going to make it uh, quite a dark dark blue color because it's, it's a nighttime scene so something like that a dark bluey gray I'm just picking colors off the other screen that seem appropriate and um, I'm going to give it fall off none but the important thing is that I'm excluding the slab that's the volumetric on the volumetric clouds are on and I'm also going to uh, exclude the lighting effect plane because I don't want that to light up another blob over here so you can see now well, that's a bit extreme that isn't it too much so I'll, I'll reduce that to 15 for example so it's just a bit of gentle light falling down perhaps from a moon that's not uh, not visible in this scene this uh, tapered material here seems a bit bright so I'll drop that make that darker so it's not standing out so much so it's just a bit of light on this headland to give it uh, s some detail that looks too weak and uh, the important thing as I said was to make sure that you use your include and exclude the influence feature here to ensure that th the lights are lighting the appropriate things and they're not lighting things that are going to really slow the render time down so if, if this light lit for example the clouds then the render time would go up to 10 minutes and likewise that uh, ring of um, spotlights there would also increase the render time dramatically whereas um, if if we were to in also include the effects plane you would probably get a blob on the effects plane for example I'll, I'll see if that happens right I'm not excluding the effects plane now and you can see that that light is now lighting that plane you can see where it is and it's also casting a shadow on there so that's the reason why when you add other light sources you want to be excluding as well as the clouds if you've got any in the scene the the surface you're using to capture the effect and then that that just gets the light it needs the other things to get don't get the light you know and, and everything gets the appropriate level of lighting so that's one way of going about producing the illusion of a lighthouse beam if you could uh, put these spots lights in and just ca put a surface in there to capture the light that just that it's only included on that light source and as you can see the well controlling the light in this way allows fairly efficient render times I mean this thing's got volumetric cloud and it's got uh, you know over a dozen light sources in but because of the influence control you're able to uh, make sure that uh, you've excluded the ones that are going to really slow the render down right I'll just let that render out and uh, show you the finished in, in a second I'll just pause the video and that's it then so obviously if I had a bit more time I could probably like cut some little windows into this uh, lighthouse or add a railing but uh, given the limitation of the 15 minutes to produce a scene I don't think that's too bad so uh, I hope that's helped you out there and uh, shows you how you can use the uh, influence control to create a lighting effect. Well, while I was editing the video I had a little bit of a tinker and what I've done is I've reduced the thickness of the lighthouse because it was looking a bit fat and taken the light that was lighting this edge round a bit further and further away so it's just catching this edge, you've got some shadow region here, here and modified the light so it lights the inside there. Just a few minor changes to improve the image.